The reason why I wanted to do this lecture is because a lot of us, when we start studying histology, we do not know a simple definition. And the definition that I'm talking about is this word here. So what is exactly a tissue? And this is what I'm going to deal in as much detail as I can. And so you can get an understanding and the right grasp of what this word means. And then you can go on and study the science behind it. Before I give you the definition of what a tissue is, I need to talk about the cell. And if you look at a house, a house, for example, a very poorly drawn house, has different blocks that builds it. And every organism out there that you see, including yourself, of course, has building blocks. And their building blocks are going to be cells. So this is a very important thing to know before we go and talk about what a tissue really is. I gave you the definition of what a cell was and I told you it was the building block of every organism. Now a tissue is going to be an aggregate of cells which function in a collective way. Say if I have a cell here, a poorly drawn cell, but it's, it gets the job done. So a membrane here with a cytoplasm and my nucleus here. This is my cell. So if an aggregate of cells, or a group, in other words, a group of cells come together to function towards the same purpose, whatever it might be, this is going to be called a tissue. So that is the definition of a tissue. Now in orders of things, if tissues come together to function towards the same purpose, they will form organs. And by the organs that you know, the heart, the stomach, all the organs in your body. And then organs come together to form organisms and a very popular case of an organism that you might be studying in medical school yourself, so humans. So how many types of tissues are out there? I'm going to tell you the number for animals, and for animals I'm including of course ourselves, humans. Plants have different number of tissues and they, different types of tissues as well, but you can have a look if you're studying uh, biology, plant biology, but this is mostly for animal biology or human biology if you're in medical school. And for animals, I can tell you that there are four types of tissues. And I'm just going to briefly discuss these types here on this tutorial, very briefly because you can go into so much detail. But the first one is the epithelium. The second one is connective tissue. T for tissue. The other one is muscle. So muscle tissue. And finally nervous tissue. So these are the four basic uh, tissues found in humans. So the epithelium is the first in the list of the four basic types of tissues found in humans and also in animals. And what I need to tell you about this for now is that epithelial cells can be found covering body surfaces. They can also be in or line body cavities and also form glands. Now, some of the examples where you can find epithelial cells or epithelium is in skin, airways, reproductive tract, and also inner lining of digestive tract. So the second in the list of the four basic tissues found in humans that I need to talk about is the connective tissue. Also, you will find a lot of abbreviated forms as CT. And the CT, or the connective tissue, is a fibrous tissue, meaning that the cells, or this tissue, will be, or you will find, a lot of fibers. 
The second thing that I need to tell you is that the cells of the connective tissue, this is a very important, very important characteristic of this tissue, is that the cells, say if I have some cells here in my connective tissue, the cells will be surrounded by an extracellular matrix. And for now, I'm not going to go into specifics of what an extracellular matrix is, because I will do it in different tutorials, which you can follow here on Salmonella Place. But what you need to know now is that these cells will be surrounded by something. They are not as packed together as other cells in other tissues. They have something surrounding them, this extracellular matrix. Now, the third thing that you need to know about connective tissue is that this is the tissue that support, structure, and binds together other tissues. So these are the main functions of connective tissue. And what I want to give you here is, uh, and depending on these functions that I just showed you here, examples of connective tissue are blood and bone. So the third on the list of the four basic types of tissues found in animals and of course human beings is muscle tissue. And muscle tissue is what your body uses to produce force and cause motion or in other words movement. Either a locomotion to move from point A to point B or to actually move within internal organs, movement caused within internal organs. And that, as an example, I can give you what happens in the digestive tract. For example, when food needs to go from point A to point B, our digestive tract is able to move to cause movement uh, within itself to take or to do that. And that is caused by muscle tissue, of course. The second thing that I need, and it's very important to tell you about muscle tissue, is that the cells of this tissue are comprised or are quite rich in contractile proteins. And they need these proteins, or these proteins actually form a certain device that allow cells to contract. And these proteins are called actin. They're very famous, actin and myosin. Third thing I would like to mention about this tissue here in this lecture is that there are three types of muscle tissue in your body. The first one is the skeletal muscle, and the skeletal muscle is found in muscles attached to bone, the ones that actually help in your major movements. The second one is smooth muscle, and this is the one that I was just talking about, found in or within internal organs, which help, for example, in digestive tract, move food from point A to point B. And the third one is cardiac muscle, and as the name indicates, cardiac is the muscle found in the heart. And this is the muscle responsible for the heart beating, which helps the heart actually pump blood all over your body. Nervous tissue is fourth on our list of the four basic types of tissues found in humans. And these are the cells that comprise the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And I have it abbreviated here, CNS for central nervous system. And your central nervous system is comprised of your brain and your spinal cord. So this is where you find nervous tissue. Meanwhile, on PNS or peripheral nervous system, you will find as well nervous tissue. And this is, these are the cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and also motor neurons. They are spread throughout the rest of your body and are quite important as well. Now, the special thing about nervous tissue cells is that these are able to transmit messages. They are able to communicate with one another uh, in a very special way, and they're also able to carry messages throughout your body from one point to another. So I gave you the basic definition of what a tissue is, also took you through the list of the four basic tissues found in animals, and of course humans. Now it is time, and to conclude this lecture, to go over the science and the techniques to, that are used to study tissues. Now, 
histology is the word that I'm looking for that describes the science that studies tissues. If we break it down into two, histo means tissue and logi study. So this is the study of tissues. And as we speak, there are many new techniques that are being invented and created throughout the world that are used to study tissues. But in all or most of the histology labs that you find, especially in your medical school, these are the main techniques that are used or the classical techniques that are used to study tissues. So one of the things that it is done to your tissue is that or the tissues that you want to study you place them into a paraffin block which well it's kind of like a wax and then this block needs to go into this device that we see here which will cut this paraffin block into really thin slices and this device here as I just wrote here is called a microtome now, once you have those really thin slices of paraffin uh, containing your tissue, you take them into an optical microscope where you're able to observe the tissue and then study as you wish. One of the very important steps that is done in histology, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about order here, but one of the main or the very important things that need to be done to a tissue is staining. You need to stain a tissue to study it. And staining, in other words, is coloring. So you need to color the structures that you want to look at. There are stains that are able to actually stain or color a specific structure in the tissue that you are st studying. That way, when you're looking under a microscope, you're able to identify that structure that had been stained according to the protocol.